What is up everybody? My name is P. Larius and welcome to episode 99 of Moe Ninja Girls. As always, let's get our free gotcha box of the day. And like I said, it's episode 99. I'm going to try to do something special for episode 100. Since we are finally here, I feel like I should have some kind of celebration for a hundred episode of everybody following me and supporting me. Look at that! Ten jewels, not even power recover. So everything's looking up. Let's get right into the story. We blew through last chapter and we are on season six, chapter eight, Fight in Frost. Which I'm guessing is with Rika? Yeah. This time, you will not be getting away. We don't have to do this, Tenge-san. Precisely, stand aside, Tenge. Dot dot dot. Despite Enju's please, Tenge stays silent. Her eyes remain locked on us, in a fierce glare. That's how she always looks. Just like before, she refuses to listen. But the situation has changed. Maybe, with the way things are now. Listen, Tenge-san. We've already rescued Enju. The former owner is dead. Don't you see? You have no reason to fight for that woman anymore. I see. This time, Tenge responds. We might have a shot. Besides, that duty, that mission you were given, is it really from Abnubi? Listen to him, Tenge. You're being deceived. Enju adds with a shout. Out of all of us, she has spent the most time with Tenge. Perhaps Enju's words will convince her. Enju. In response, Tenge spares only the slightest glance at Enju. Glad to see you are doing better. Now I know I will not need to hold back. A smile forms on her face. It is a brief glimpse of the Tenge we knew at school. But it soon fades, with Tenge adopting the stern mask of a ninja once more. My mission is not yet complete. I cannot back down. But why? A true ninja must be ready to give their life for their duty. No doubt. No hesitation. Even if that duty is a suspicious one, I must fulfill it. Because I am a ninja. We have wasted enough time talking. Prepare yourself. I will defeat you, even if it costs me my life. Dot dot dot. It was no use after all. We cannot save Tenge, so long as she still has her duty. Then, what should we do? Oh, I don't like these choices. You ready, Miyu? I decided to talk to Miyu before we begin. Uh, um, E? Mm, e? Who else? You're the only one who can keep Tenge-san's teleportation at bay. Actually, I suppose I could do it, but I think Tenge-san already has a challenger lined up. Yes, I'm ready and willing. Quit while you are still ahead, Rika. You have never beat me, and you never will. Not this time. You strayed from path. Cannot lose now. We'll beat you at any cost. Miu, we defeat Tenge together. Yes, we will. Please leave it up to me. Kept you waiting? Great, your one is closer to me, you. Woohoo! Now it's time to start season 6, chapter 8, part 2 of 11. Tenge Senpai. Rika and Miyu now stand before Tenke, who furrows her brow at the sight. Two on, the har two on one hardly seems fair. Wrong. All fighting will do alone, Miyu only providing backup. Rika produces a knife, steadying at her hand as she assumes a fighting stance. One defeating you, it will be me. You pa your past? Reason for betrayal? Do not care to be honest. Just, just stop. Do you really think you can beat me this time? We could fight a million times, and you would never win. Wrong. All ends here, with this fight. Stand here, of own volish, volition, but you, 
uncertain of standing, of reasons, easily beatable. <laughs> yeah, dot dot dot. It seems Rika has struck a nerve. All emotion instantly vanishes from Tenge's face. Silently, Tenge readies her full moon fan. Her murderous intent is almost palpable. Very well, then I will end it here. Forever! <laughs> Tenge vanishes from sight, apparently appearing not a half second later in front of Rika. Instinctively, Rika raises her knife to block the fan swung at her neck. Jesus! Thought we knew Tenge had the power to teleport. This time, we could not even see her close that full moon fan of hers. Is that what Tenge is capable of when she does not hold back? And... An admirable effort, but can you take this? Ugh. Ah! <laughs> Tenge forcefully shows Rika back, then dashes out a series of swift strikes. What is most fearsome about this attack is her speed. Tenge strikes three, maybe even four times, all in the blink of an eye. This quickness, it's just as fast as that wannabe samurai I fought. The bodyguard who dedicated his life to the sword. Hiya! Fortunately for us, Rika manages to parry every one. Not only that, Rika uses the pause between each attack by Tenge to attempt counterattacks of her own. So you parried them. Not bad. Late for surprise, better than anyone. No, you rhythm of attacks. It makes sense. Rika has faced Tenge many a time. Little wonder then that she knows where the next attack will come. Rika Machiyuki is no slouch. Each loss has not been a mere defeat for her. She learned something from each loss. Now she just might be able to react to Tenge's attacks, no matter how fast they are. Is that so? We will see. Take this! Dot dot dot. Heads up, Rika. Block. F -f Freeze. Now it's time to start season six, chapter eight, part three of eleven. Rika creates a barrier of ice, which instantly dotted with the kunui knives held by Tenge. Moments before, Tenge had been close enough to exchange blows with Rika but now she is far enough away that only projectiles could reach. Even after blocking this attack, Rika has little time to recover. Nah. Next comes a slash from behind. Rika does a forward roll, dodging it in the nick of time, where a flurry of canoe knives awaits her. Ah! Creating another ice wall, Rika tries to block them, but she doesn't stop them all. A few of the knives were too fast, nicking her arm. Dodging yet again, Rika creates some distance. She glares at Tenge. Simultaneous combined offense, teleportation into projectiles. Additionally, short range offense. You learn quick. Bravo, Rika. Bravo. Tenge says, in her dominated hand, she wields a full moon fan. In her other, she holds a knife. With my power of teleportation, I do not need to worry about the space between us. Do you know what this means? Without warning, Tenge lobs a canoe knife at Rika's head. Urgh. Rika immediately strikes it down. But Tenge uses this opportunity well. She is no longer in front of Rika when this happens. It means you cannot hope to win. Give up. Mere milliseconds later, a voice comes from behind Rika. It is Tenge who is already launching her next attack. Nuh. It is almost by instinct that Rika pulls off a forward roll. Tenge's deadly strike, which would have cleaved through Rika, only just scrapes her back. Yeesh! Who knew it would be this hard to fight a teleporter? When facing her, the very concept of distance becomes meaningless. Forget trying to keep an eye on her. If anything, the more you focus with your eyes, the more vulnerable you become to her teleporting. I can only think of two ways to nullify her offense. One is to use clairvoyance, predict where Tenge will be next, 
Like Miu can. Miu, assistance! I, I must apologize. Tenge Senpai moves so quickly, I cannot keep up. Understood. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Miu. Seems when Tenge gets serious, her speed is too much for even Miu's dangerous sense. Guess that only leaves the other way, then. Wait, for a final moment. Be prepared, Miu. Until then, we'll handle this. Flipping the kunui knives in her hand, Rika fixes her gaze upon Tenge. You still wish to fight? I must warn you, you are too slow to keep up with me. To keep fighting like this would be a pointless waste of time. Wrong. <laughs> like open book. Read every move. No more escaping. Dodging about. Is that so? It seems I have underestimated you. Now it's time to start Season 6, Chapter 8, Part 4 of 11. You will have to learn the hard way, I suppose. Full Moon Fan! What the... <laughs> Am I seeing double? Triple? Quadruple? Tenge turns into a blur, like innumerable copies stacked upon each other. I cannot hide my shock. But those copies do not stay put. Before long, there are Tenge's everywhere. Bonus! Is she using the Shadow Clone Jujitsu? Not... No, this is different. She is right. This is nothing like the Shadow Clone Jujutsu Okara uses, Tenge is using her power to produce countless after images by ceasingly teleport teleporting from one point to the next, Tenge appears to us only as an illusion. Try as you might, there will be no visible Tenge to focus upon, and before you know it, you will be cut down from behind. Yes, this, this is Tenge's ultimate attack. By full moon cast, mirage and delusion, dusk harbors shades, reflected illusion, take this, my ultimate attack. Strange, <laughs> strange flame, all at once, the near infinite image of, the, of Tenge attack Rika. She is completely surrounded, there is no way that Rika can avoid the onslaught of Tenge's. But wait, what if Rika knew this was coming? What if she never meant to escape? Just as predicted, Tenge. What? The change is abrupt, yet noticeable. It emerges from the heart of the mass of mirages. From one girl, knife at the ready, eyes closed in concentration. Told you before, you uncertain of standing, of reasons, easily beatable. You use mirages, cast illusions, in tomb in ice, freeze them all, expose real Tenge. Damn! Beguiling blossom, incarnadine hue, bloom and freeze, world and view, phantasmal horde by single strike, fell them all with frigid might? What? A wave of intense cold expands outward from Rika, freezing everything in the area. I've never felt such concentrated ninja skill from her before. Is this her ultimate attack? Emanate frigid damnation Daigurin? <laughs> this is the only other way to nullify Tenge's offense. An all range attack. Tenge might be fast, but it won't help her at all if everything is frozen solid. Unfortunately, this comes at a heavy price. Brrr, it's freezing in here. Machiyuki-san, what are you thinking? Rika probably used every ounce of strength to pull this off. This move, which rapidly freezes anything and everything in the area. And anyone too, friend or foe. But we get away with just being chilly. It is a different story for Rika. At the source of the cold... Even the air she needs to breathe is frozen solid. The move does as much damage to her as to her opponent. It is truly a double-edged sword. Do, do, do. This desperate maneuver by Rika freezes everything, and she is no exception. Her body is covered in frost and chill blains. Fitting, then, that it is named after the Daigurin level of hell in Buddhism. 
the eighth circle of the hell of eternal cold, where lost frigid souls see their skin burst into chill blains, like gruesome bunches of crimson blossom, hence the name Digurin, large crimson lotus flowers. What? Ugh. Jesus criminy. I think we're going to end it there. This is too crazy. <laughs> I guess we will end with some ninja fighting. We will save the rest of that episode for the next episode. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some wins under our belt. That looks good. There we go. One win in a row. No, thank you. Mm, let's try to skip that one. Try to skip that one. Oh god, one more try. There we go. Can't get any better than that. And just enough to squeeze out a second win. Let's skip that one. Are we that lucky? We get three wins in a row? E nope. Just enough to beat us. Alright, let's skip that one. Let's try that one. Oh, just enough to beat us again. And that'll do it. <laughs> Alright, let's go to our receiving box. Receive the jewels and the login bonus. And before forgetting, let's finally feed some cookies to Foo. See if that gets us anywhere. It's 706, we have 500, there we go. That gives us the Lily, the B-Day Princess Part 2. And we just need 594 more cookies to get some change juice, which is always helpful. So, I hope you didn't mind that one. It was pretty quick. But as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will catch you guys and girls and everyone for the next special episode, which is episode 100. Stay tuned. Peace. Green Wing, I don't like you. Know what that means? My name is Pilarius. Oh,